Hi there, welcome back to Private Pilot Ground School. This video is for somebody who doesn't have any glass experience whatsoever and is maybe curious as to how this whole glass thing works. My plan is to give you a little intro and cover the basic layout of what a glass cockpit looks like. Now when you think of a glass cockpit you probably think of this. What you don't see is all the behind the scenes. This is the Garmin G1000 system. It's pretty much state of the art and it's very popular. Now the airplane you fly might have a partial glass panel with only a PFD or maybe a couple instruments that are replaced by displays. In any case, most of what we cover today will apply to all glass panels even though my examples will be for the G1000. So what's the big deal? Why are people all of a sudden switching to a glass cockpit if the steam gauges work just fine? The big reason is that you can get more information and you can display it in one central place instead of all over the cockpit with all the different gauges. The cost has also come down as the systems have been developed and the reliability is much more than that of the analog gauges. One of the things you'll notice as you're transitioning to a glass cockpit is just how much information and learning there is. A typical glass cockpit consists of a primary flight display or a PFD and a multifunction display, or an MFD. On the primary flight display, you'll see your typical six pack of instruments, even though it looks a little bit different. The layout is very similar, if not exactly the same, for all the glass cockpits. You have the airspeed on the left, your attitude indicator in the middle, the altimeter and vertical speed on the right, and your heading indicators at the bottom. The airspeed tape is on the left side, and it descends, bringing larger numbers into view as you accelerate. The speed tape has markings for all the V-speeds and the bands for normal and caution ranges and also for the flap range. The attitude indicator on the primary flight display is much bigger than a typical six-pack. It stretches all the way across the entire screen and that makes it easy to see where the horizon is. The roll pointer shows your bank angle, and the tick marks are for 10, 20, 30, 45, and 60 degrees. The altimeter is on the right side of the PFD. Your current altitude is displayed in that box right in the center, and each increment is 20 feet. The heading indicator is below your attitude indicator, and it's also called the HSI, or a Horizontal Situation Indicator and that's because it can display more than just your heading. You can also superimpose a course on there from either a GPS or a VOR, and you also can have bearing pointers that will point to different navigational aids. Another thing about the heading indicator is that it is also a half, if you will, of a turn and slip indicator. Now at the top of the heading indicator, you have a couple tick marks on the left and the right side of the current heading, and those are for standard and half standard rate turns. The second part of the turn and slip indicator is the slip skid indicator, and now that is up underneath your pointer for your angle of bank. It's that bar right underneath the triangle, and your goal is to keep it centered. And if that bar moves left or right, it tells you which rudder to step on to make everything coordinated. And finally, our vertical speed indicator is a pointer that shows your climb or descent just to the right of the altimeter. And on some PFDs, it might look like an arc with an arrow pointing to your climb rate. One very useful feature on the PFD is the trend vector. And in the G1000, it's a magenta line that moves up and down based on the acceleration data that your airplane gets. And with that information, all the fancy boxes that are connected together can figure out where your airplane will be if nothing changes. And in this case, it's where the airplane will be in six seconds. Now this trend vector is available on your altimeter, on the heading indicator, and on the airspeed indicator. And this is very handy when you're trying to maintain a certain altitude, heading, or an airspeed, which is what we're doing all the time. And so with this trend line, you can see whether your airspeed's increasing and if it will continue increasing based on what's currently happening. And if the trend vector isn't doing anything, it means you're stable. You're not accelerating, decelerating, turning, climbing. That's very handy. We're pretty much done talking about the PFD, and you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, there's so many more things and buttons and all that stuff on the screen, and we're not covering those just because there's so much information, and that's a totally different topic, and there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to click each one and what they bring up. As you do get comfortable flying a glass panel, you will use those buttons, and you'll figure out how to change frequencies and turn on maps and plan flight plans and things like that, 
and you might have synthetic vision with all the geography and stuff like that. It's very neat, but it's way beyond the scope of this intro video. So now let's move on to the MFD or the multifunction display. And the most obvious part is the map. All I will say about the map is just make sure you're zoomed in properly for your phase of flight when you're using it. Now our map can display all sorts of things from airspace, weather, TFRs, airways, all sorts of things. And of course, some of those depend on the subscription you've paid for and on the equipment installed. So you might be able to get traffic if you have ADS-B. But in most cases on an MFD, you should at least see your airplane position and some sort of geography or airspace. The beauty of having everything digital is that now you have a database that stores all the information you might need for your flight. So you can set up a flight plan and you could set up, let's say, a target altitude that you want to be at the traffic pattern and it'll tell you when to descend. And you can find runway lengths and traffic pattern altitudes and all sorts of things all in one little box instead of referring to all your manuals. One pretty neat thing that I do want to point out is with some of the newer stuff that has Bluetooth, you can now set up your flight plan on ForeFlight and then copy it over to your avionics once you get in the airplane. So that's kind of neat. So all that to say, your MFD is a very powerful tool if you know how to use it. And it does take a little bit of time to get used to all the flight planning tools and everything that's available for you. Now, one of the more important things is the engine instruments. And the beauty of having everything digital is that all the gauges can be displayed different colors for normal or abnormal operations. And you can even have alerts that pop up when something's outside of normal parameters, like oil pressure low or something like that. Now, in a setup like this where you have a PFD and an MFD and it's a G1000, you have what's called a reversionary mode. In other words, if one of the displays were to fail, the other display would take over and display the information that was on that other display. So if you were to lose your MFD, your engine gauges would come over and be on your PFD. And if you were to lose the PFD, it would switch over and go to the other display. And both of those displays are basically the same exact screen and software, it's just displaying different things. Now remember when I showed you the boxes that feed data into the MFD and the PFD? The most important ones are the Air Data Computer and the Attitude Heading Reference System. The Air Data Computer takes inputs from the pitot tube and the static lines and it displays information to you, like airspeed, altimeter, and the vertical speed. Now if you were to lose the Air Data Computer, you would lose your airspeed, your altimeter, and your vertical speed indicator. And the way you'd know is you'd have X's through those instruments. Now the Attitude Heading Reference System, if that was to fail, you would lose your attitude, your heading, your trend vectors, because your AHARS has magnetometers and accelerometers in there, which is direction and acceleration, so anything that relies on that wouldn't be available. And once again, you'd see X's through those displays. So there's your intro. Of course, I didn't cover everything in super high detail, but hopefully that's enough to get you started. I do want to finish by saying that every airplane is different when it comes to glass cockpits and the equipment that's installed. You might see some that are fully equipped, like the Cirrus, or you might be flying something that's partially equipped. And the point is that you need to be familiar with the equipment you operate, and the right combination of studying, flying with an instructor, and actually button pushing to see what happens is pretty much the best way to learn. The good news is, most of the important information you need is already displayed, and you don't have to go to a sub-sub-sub-menu to find it. And if you are curious, there's plenty of YouTube out there to find anything specific that you might need. So with that, have fun, fly safe, and always keep learning. See you next time.